Hello everyone, welcome back to week three of our uh, live miniature Monday. Hope you are all uh, being safe out there and, uh, you know, keeping sane with everything. I, that has been my go-to phrase uh, whenever I talk to everyone, or anyone, I suppose everyone at this point, anyone that I talk to is everyone. <laughs> um, I tell people to stay safe and stay sane and clearly I'm doing a great job of that second. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Uh, we are going to continue work on our cart, or Esmeralda's cart, I should say. It's not mine. Um, I uh, Since the last video, I did a few touch-ups on the main body, and I think it's time to get into the main details. So let me make sure I've got this going up. up, up. There we go. Fantastic. All right, so uh, yeah, here we are. Here is where we are with the cart right now. Now, our obvious next choice of where to go uh, would be um, the roof. And I'm not going to lie, I'm going to hold off on that for a couple of reasons. First reason being that um, you'll notice with the way that I grip this to paint, uh, I am gripping on the underside here and I'm gripping on the top part of this roof. Uh, now, I could just hold off on painting this uh, because if I were to paint it now and keep holding it like this to paint, um, that paint is going to rub off and I'm going to have to redo it again and again and again. So it's going to be one of the last things that I want to do um, before moving on to the next step. The other reason is I'm not 100% sure what color I want to paint it. Uh, I've had a few ideas. There is uh, a beautiful red that I have. Uh, that I might be doing. There is a lovely uh, blue as well, or uh, uh, a nice purple. Now, I I think the purple that I have actually here. Let me go ahead and pull these up so you can uh, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got this lovely dragon red, which uh, could give us a very interesting color on the top. Um, but also this uh, eldritch purple was um catching my eye now i am a little hesitant to go purple for one reason and one reason only uh one of the main um source materials i've been looking at uh is not a, a historical uh piece but is um literally this having been painted and i pulled that up so i could make sure i saw all of the details uh, anything that my eyes might be missing but I don't want to just paint a copy of that. And the roof on that one was a beautiful purple. Uh, so I have a few options. Um, what I would like to do now is we're going to move on to the metals. I've got uh, Vallejo's German Grey uh, that has been set aside and ready to go. While I'm doing the metals, which there's a lot on here to get, I want you all to think about what color uh, you might like for this roof. So. Think about that while we uh, get to it. But enough talking, enough stalling. We're here to paint. Let's uh, let's work on some of these metals. Alrighty. So as I said, I've got German Gray already here and prepped. I didn't water it down too much. We'll see if that's going to be a problem. Oh my gosh, what to start with? You know what? We're going to start with these bars along uh, the main body here. Now, I had considered a couple of different colors uh, to do for these metallics. Um, anyone who's been watching Miniature Monday or the Adventures Pack um, knows that I have a love of um, Army Painter's Dark Stone. And I think that that color, it to me, it looks like a beautiful, um, like, worn iron. Um, and I, th I think it can be used for a lot of different things, but because of that, it tends up, er, it tends up, ends up showing up in pretty much every mini that I paint. So obviously when, uh, it was time to do these metallic pieces, Mike is right in my face. Uh, when it came down to do these metallic pieces, I thought that Darkstone would be great. And... I decided to to see what else I had um, and a lot of reference material that I was seeing had very very dark uh, metal on here 
So I thought, hey, German Grey could be excellent for that. Now, I didn't want to go too terribly dark. Um, you know, you can't start off with a matte black. Actually, the Miniature Monday video that went live this morning, uh, it's been a busy week for Miniature Mondays for me, hasn't it? Um, the, the video that went live this morning, I talked about how we can't go too dark too quickly um, with colors. So if you want something that's that's black, it's usually a good idea to go one step up from black. Um, I know there's a great black gray uh, that Vallejo makes. Um, now, and the reason for this, at least that I have found, again, take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I don't, you know, know everything. Um, heck, I don't know much. <laughs> uh, but the, the reason that I think you don't want to go too dark with your paints is it leaves you little to no room um, to go from there. So if you want something really dark and you paint it black and then it comes time for shadows and washes, well, then suddenly, where are you going to go um, from there? Not really anywhere. At least you can't. Okay. Okay, I see what that is. There was a little bit of overlap on these, uh, uh, the wooden beams. At first I thought it was just a, a larger part of this brace that's putting them together, but no, it's, uh, the lower beam and the higher beam where they merge. That's actually a lovely detail. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if you can um, see it here, but this little section here is a little thicker. Um, it's, it's basically the opposite end of this. So this front wooden beam actually extends out past the uh, the coupling. I love that. Because they could have very easily just had that end in the coupling. But no, having that little bit out there is lovely. Now, it's not the cleanest paint job that I've done, so I am going to have to go back over and clean some of this up. Um, which, you know, is not a big issue, but something that I need to be wary of. Let's get a little more water in this. Something I need to be wary of when doing this is um, cleaning up over dark colors can be very difficult, um, especially if you're trying to clean up with lighter colors. Also, on the subject of colors, um, I'm not sure why this happened, but... Ooh, man. Ooh, that, was, that was a little sloppy. Um, not sure why this happened, but my uh, face cam today decided to go really blue. Uh, I'm sure you can tell. Uh, did my best to try and get it back to normal, but wasn't quite able to get there. So, you know. I'm just going to be a little, little blue during this one. In image only. I'm, I'm, on the inside, I'm doing well. I'm happy. I'm painting. What's not to be happy? All right, those look pretty good. Oh, touch my face. It's okay. I haven't been outside today, and I've been washing my hands a lot. Still, though, not a great habit to get into. I know there's memes going around all over the internet about this, but man, I did not realize how much I touched my face until all this happened. Turns out it was a lot. See, there we go. Ooh, ugh, I just got a lot of paint on my brush. I don't want to overload the brush um, for a couple of reasons. You know, you want to you be able to control the amount of paint that goes down. And sometimes if you way overload your brush, the second you touch it to the mini, it just boom, sinks down. Oh, thank you, David. Yeah, this is looking lovely. Honestly, I cannot wait to get some... Um, uh, a wash down on this um, that's gonna make that grain pop so much um, 
Oh, shoot. What was I talking about? Um, oh, right. Paint on a brush. Uh, oh, wow. We have seven live viewers right now. This is great. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so it, getting a lot of paint on the brush, the second that you, you put any sort of detail down, it'll just shunk, sink onto the mini. Uh, but the other reason that I don't want a large amount of paint on my brush is that um, I won't get to use all of it. Some of it will dry uh, before getting onto the model. So you got to find that nice balance of how much paint you have. Ooh, getting into a tight corner here. How much paint you have on your brush versus then not having to go back again and again and again to recover it. I need a water break. I've noticed in the last couple times that I've done this, I have not been drinking enough water. And so because of that, my hands will shake, and uh, not the best thing for when you're painting details. Oh. Dogs outside just really want to be known. They got stuff to say. That is something else that I've noticed during this time indoors, that I uh, I miss my friends uh, and neighbors a lot. I also really miss their pets. I uh, don't have any uh, any animals of my own here. Um, it's not that I don't like animals. Clearly, I do. Um, it's just right now my lifestyle doesn't support having an animal, and you know I don't I don't want to. If I get an animal, I want to be able to take care of it, as opposed to getting it just because I want it. And I know right now I'd just be getting one because I want one, not because I could take care of it. Whew. Does that go all the way up? You know what? I I get to make the decision if it does or not. It, it depends on how I paint it. Man, I chose just the most detailed part of this to do first, didn't I? One trick that I'm doing to get these raised edges here, rather than going at it with the tip of my brush, you'll note that I am uh, hitting it with the flat edge. And um, that is just giving me a little more control as to the paint only going down on the highest most point so uh, excellent trick actually if you're uh, wanting to do um, edge lines or edged highlighting oh my gosh on the subject of edge lines there is an amazing painter out there um, who paints a lot of minis in the style of uh, Borderlands. So that very cartoony, um, well, cartoony realism. They've got the very thick lines defining um, the, the edges of their, uh, like the details on their body. Um, can't touch my face again. I, um, yeah, so really beautiful work out there but i wish i i knew this artist offhand i would love to be able to recommend them um if you go on reddit and search some mini painters you'll definitely definitely come across them okay there's that let's move on to these little parts down here um so for those of you who weren't here at the uh very beginning we're going to be painting the uh the the metallic pieces on this right now and afterwards we're going to move on to the roof i'm delaying the roof ever so slightly uh for a couple of reasons but one of the reasons is i'm not 100 percent sure what color i would like to paint it and i want to leave that a little up to you guys what color would you like to see the roof of this cart being um I said it before at the beginning that I am leaning a little towards, uh, I've got a lovely deep red, um, actually the same red that I used on the cultists. Um, I believe it's dragon red by Reaper. Um, but then I've also got a lovely purple, um, that could be pretty good. I, 
I like the purple, but I'm also hesitant to do it because uh, purple roof was used in one of the... Uh, oh, that turned out really nicely. Um, the reference images. And I don't just want to make you know a carbon copy of a reference image. It's actually the same image that inspired me to do this color for the wood grain. So, yeah, give it some thought. Let me know what uh, colors you would like to see this roof as. You know what? We are going to move on to... We're on the underside. Let's do this big chunk here. Okay, so the axles. I think that all of this is just going to be this color. So usually uh, when I paint, I uh, have some music playing, but can't 100% do that right now since, you know, we're doing this live. But man, I have had, um, if any of you are familiar with um, Dan, Dan Avedon, is that his last name? Um, he is uh, one of the two members of Game Grumps. He is... Um, the lead singer for Ninja Sex Party. Uh, he was recently featured in a song by, I want to say Night Runner is the band name. Uh, but he was a featured vocalist for this song called Magnum Bullets. And, whew, it is very... It, it, I don't want to say catchy because it's not like that. Like, ooh, yeah, this is what a great, uh, what a great thing to snap your finger to. It's it's more of an earworm in that it's like an epic rock ballad. Uh, the whole thing tells a story, and the animation uh, in the music video is absolutely beautiful. Um, so, anyway, the point of all that is that that is stuck in my head, and I really want to listen to it, but I'm gonna have to wait until. Whew, come on, shakes. Any of you painters out there have any um, techniques that you use for reducing the shakes on your hands? Um, I know one of the things I need to do is just... I should probably have lunch before doing this um, as opposed to after. Um, that might help. <laughs> um, trying to drink more water. But also trying to remember to breathe. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm not uh, here painting is I teach um, uh, stage combat. So like theatrical combat for film and television. And, uh, you know, one of the... the cardinal rules that I make sure all my students know is uh, we refer to it as breathe or die which you know makes sense if you don't breathe then you're gonna have a problem but man breath is such an essential uh, aspect for more than just you know, keeping oxygen in us it keeps us relaxed it keeps us uh, fluid in our motions and um can be incredibly calming. So I, I just need to remember to paint or to breathe while I paint. Um, traditional green on the roof. Oh, you know, I might have some greens. Are you planning to add weathering such as hints of rust to the iron bits? Um, that is an excellent uh, question, Michael. So I do have a rust effect. Um, I wasn't planning on adding any rust onto the metal pieces, um, although to be quite honest, I hadn't gotten that far in my thought process. There are some parts on the model here. Uh, let's take a quick break. Um, let me pull out something that if I point at it, it might not ac accidentally get paint. Um, it's kind of difficult to see. Let me pull this up here into frame. Uh, there's some sections here that are... Uh, they were issues in the mold of the the model itself, uh, so that the the 
are these cast this this might be cast resin um or um injection molded but anyway whatever it is um there was an error in the 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 molding process there that came out as imperfections and usually that is something that you can clean up but unfortunately for mine um that bit was right on top of some of the other intricate detail work on the model itself so i decided very early on when trying to clean that up that rather than uh rather than try and scrape that away with an exacto knife and um you know hide that imperfection uh i thought that i would use that as an excuse to put either a little bit of rot on the wood but to be honest it looks as though it's um, protruding rather than going into so this this is that little bit where you gotta know a little bit a little bit about wow this is that time when you need to know uh some things about what you're painting uh if i wanted that to be rot in the wood you know the when wood rots, it goes away because um, it's being eaten away. Um, and these errors are adding, not subtracting. So rather than being rot, I decided that that would be a good place to put like some moss or some um, little plant life that had grown on the uh, the side of the care. Wow, I am shaking so much trying to get in there. It also didn't help that I was in a weird hand position. Anyway, um using that to become a part of the the model as opposed to trying to hide it um so there is going to be that on the wagon um but i don't know how weathered i want this to be um and this then goes into i know we talked a lot last time about the story of this wagon and who it belongs to and we had a lot of great ideas um but to be honest wow that is that is that is a tricky spot. I might have to rest my... Okay. One moment while I collect my thoughts and focus in really quick. Who? Oh, that is so tricky. Because the, the there's a part that is lower on the axle... Or the suspension, I think this is what this is. Um, so it's getting caught up on a part that I've already painted this color, which is great for that part, but not the part that I want to reach. Oh my god! No, no, there it is. I'm gonna be making wow a chunk of cleanup on on that. You know what? I'm just gonna accept its fate. And just really get in there. Oh, wow. Anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> Getting into tight areas like that is such a a, a tricky, tricky thing to maneuver. Um, and you gotta you gotta try and find different angles of attack to try and figure out. Where can you get all of those details? Man, I should have painted that before I painted the wheels. Anyway, clean up. It's going to happen. The story of the cart. That's where we were. So, <laughs> um, we talked a lot about what the story of this cart could be, but I don't think I actually decided on anything. Um... Now, I'm going to come at this from the perspective of a um oh yeah another vote for uh, another vote for green on the roof are we thinking um like a hmm i've got some muted foresty greens i've got some more brighter greens um we've got some options Anyway, um, I need to think about how much weathering to put on this. And for me, I'm going to come at that as the perspective of a DM. Uh, or a, a dungeon master or a game master. Whatever your title of choice is. Um, 
because ideally this is going to be something that is going to show up on my table. My players will get to interact with this in some fashion. I think, man, that is one of four, and it is giving me that much trouble to begin with. I'm just going to have to accept that it's going to get a little sloppy, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, my players are ideally going to um, interact with this. But I currently don't know how they'd be interacting with it. I don't have a moment in a story where these would, um, or this cart is definitely going to show up. So I need to make this generic enough that it could be anything. It could, um, you know, if, if I decide that this is going to be a wandering merchant, um, then a wandering merchant it shall be. Or if it is going to be a traveling fortune teller, um, so I can add some weathering to this, but I don't think I want to go way overboard with the weathering because that way, um, If I say, ah, yes, there is a uh, a, a traveling noble. Um, he's he's been on the run, um, but we know he lives in this area. And the players show up and find the noble living out of this cart. Um, they're not going to look at it and go, wow, that is really beaten up. A noble lives out of that. I suppose though, if it's a noble in hiding, then. It might not be the best idea for him to go around announcing his wealth with a fancy cart. Anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> you you want something to be... Oh, we talk about this actually in uh, sword play a lot with um, theatrical swords. That if uh, a prop is... Oh, sorry. Uh, if a prop is just wrong enough uh, for every era then it will work for any era. So, you know, if you have a, um, a long sword or a, um, a, like a rapier that has a swept hilt, but it's not, you know, the traditional swept hilt of the Italian Renaissance, um, then it could work for the Italian Renaissance. It could work for a modern fantasy thing. Um, you're going to get a lot more utility out of that one prop. So if you've got a lot of props at your disposal and, and you have that option of, well, I've got one for this uh, era, I've got one for this other era, and um, you know we've, we've got three for this one, then yeah, sure, get very specialized with them and, and have exactly what you need. But if you're a, a small prop shop or um, you know, a, a single owner uh, or a choreographer, then getting things that are just wrong enough for... They're not good for any era. It means they're perfect for every era. And that's going to be what we're trying to do with this cart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, oh, that's not bad. <laughs> also, if I get any of this uh, dark uh, gray on the, uh, the wheel itself, I mean, the wheel is going to need some um, dark patches on it to begin with because it... Uh, Whew, here I go shaking again. The wheels are, are constantly rolling on the ground. They're going to get beaten up. And yeah, sure, a wash is going to add some to that, but it's not going to add a lot. All right, here we go. Time to get... <laughs> I put a huge uh, black stripe on the wheel. there. <laughs> right as I was talking about how it would be okay. Yeah, well, I guess... I guess it's okay then. Part of me really wants to take a break from these axles and just paint something else. 
but we're going to push through this. We're going to get it done. Man, I've been working on them for 30 minutes. There we go. It's in there. Whatever happens, happens. Look at that. I breathe and it helps. Just don't hold your breath. This is the part where we get very quiet. Oh, I see parts that I missed on all of the others. That's okay. I see it now. Oh, boy. That's rough. That is so rough. But it's okay. We're going to get through this. This is actually a great time for me to ask. What is the most difficult thing that you have ever worked on? So for painters... What is the most difficult detail that you've had to deal with? Um, for any of you, uh, uh, any other creators out there of any sorts, just what is, what is the hardest piece that you've ever worked on? I am going to be quite honest and say this part right here, right now, takes the cake for me. Um, this little detail in here is so tricky um i'm sure if i would just stop trying to be so precious about it then uh it would look all right or it would look all right we're gonna make it look all right no if i was to stop being so precious about it it would go much faster oh boy there we go <laughs> remember when i said i thought that uh, these parts would be easy <laughs> little did i know all right that is Almost two of the axles done. Oh, ooh, that was scary. I lost um, track of where my paintbrush was. Uh, that's weird. I've never had that happen to me before. Where there, there's so many little details in here with all of the spokes of this blessed wheel um, that I lost where the, the brush was. How is anyone supposed to get paint in there? Man. So... This is the sort of thing that an airbrush um, and masking the rest of the area that you don't want that color would be so handy. Oh man, I need to take a take a second, get some more water. Um, because then I could just tape off these large areas that I don't want the paint and just pss, 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 airbrush. And it would be good to go. Oh, hey, I think a package just arrived for me. Um, had a couple of things um, that I've been waiting on. 
Uh, I haven't been making any orders off of Amazon because um, this is, you know, the, this is the time that only essentials, I think, should be ordered. Uh, ooh, ooh, ah, there we go. And most of my essentials, I am able to get where I am. I am very lucky in that uh, manner. However, I did um, place an order with uh, Wormwood that, uh, yeah, for those of anyone who is unfamiliar with Wormwood, they are uh, an amazing, <clears throat> uh, they started actually as gaming furniture. Um, they make fantastic gaming tables um, and then chairs and then moved into uh, dice trays and dice vaults. Um, and have pretty much become like the industry standard for quality woodworking nerd merch. Um, and they are, you know, doing what they can to get through all this. And one of the things that they've done is they uh, are making what, what they're calling their homebrew uh, collection. So it's all stuff being made from the homes of the workers. Uh, it's a, it was a small team. I mean, a small company of 65, um, which I suppose isn't that small, but I think during all this time it's, it's gotten much smaller. Um, but anyway, they made, um, I think they were called shields of protection. They were just a small wooden shield with the, the, their homebrew logo right now. They've uh, done a special logo of just a, a handprint, and it was one of those things that I thought, you know, I've, I've got some money that I can throw at this. Um, it's supporting a company that I, I love and I believe in, and um, also is going to mean a lot because it's it's got that symbol of, you know, surviving and making it through this, and I know these are these are tough times for a lot of people. Um, but I truly believe that, uh, we are going to make through this and I think that at the end of all this, we're going to come out, um, better. Um, I, I believe that we as a species, as, as the human race, we, um, grow through challenges and diversity and I'm, I'm not saying that I'm happy about what's happening. Um, and I'm... I'm not sitting here going, yay, yay, we're going to grow. It, but it's it's me trying to find a silver lining to this. Anyway, point being is uh, that package might be the shield of protection, and that would be be uh, beautiful. Maybe I'll do an unboxing video. We're trying to make more content uh, through all this. Um, the other thing it could be is... Um, could be packages from my family. They, they told me something was uh, going to come in the mail for Easter for me, and that's just so, so nice. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We are going to get these axles done um, in this video, I swear. Okay. The other thing that I need to do here is look and, yeah, I want to try and get as much of it as possible, but if I am having to work super hard to see where the paint is missing, you know who's not going to see that? Most people looking at this model. And I'm not about to submit this for a competition. Um, this is, like I said, for my table. Now, I want it to be good because there is no better feeling than placing something on the table and your player's going, oh, wow. I, I, I live for that feeling. Um, but I also know that this isn't going to be judged by anyone but me and all of you. So don't judge me too hard. <laughs> um. Let's see. Red and purple were colors used by rich or noble folks. And that is true. 
Yeah, yeah, because um, blue, the you know, we talk about the the royal blue. Blue was a very difficult color to get a hold of. Um, in fact, I think there's a lot of blues that were used in old um, uh, stained glass that we still have not been able to recreate. Or did we recently? I think I saw uh, an article saying that that incredible blue had been recreated. Um, don't quote me on that. Or, you know, if you quote me on that, the quote is, I think I saw an article. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so blues could be t uh, probably, probably out of the question, I'd say. At least like a royal blue. Um, oh, wait. Blue was mostly mostly used by commoners greens and yellows were pretty common right so it, i think it's it's the difference between like the royal blue God, who was the the king who um like wore it, it was that deep rich blue that was difficult to get but um like a uh i suppose a, a lighter uh blue might have been easier uh, michael i'm gonna defer to your knowledge on that because I actually don't know that once again there's a lot of things I don't know I am not a uh, 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 history scholar I am not uh, a, a, clearly not a master painter um, I am just a guy with a camera who likes to put things online. That does not mean I know things. <laughs> Everything I say is my opinion, and my opinion is subject to change. Oh man, that was something that took me a long time to get to accepting, uh, that my opinion could be subject to change. Very much used to be that whole... No, this is my my opinion. I am right. It has to be this. No, things change. Circumstances change. And it's okay to say, no, I was wrong. Just got to, you know, bite some pride. Ooh, Nelly. There's a question. Who, ooh, Nelly, that phrase. Who is, who was Nelly? Who was the original Nelly? Seems like uh, it would be one of those Wikipedia dives that you you check one question and then suddenly, man, you are looking up who first invented rope and it's 3 a.m. and you don't know what happened to your life. So... Hearing a lot of... Uh, a lot of suggestions for green on this roof. I will need to go into my green collection, see what we got. Um, normally, after deciding on a, on a color scheme, I would ch you know, check my col oh wow oh that's going to be tough to get to as well. I would check my collection and. Uh, if I didn't have a color that I wanted, I would go out and get it. Guess what I can't do right now? <laughs> Ooh, I really am liking what this German gray is doing for the me metallics here. I suppose technically what I'm painting right now is referred to as um, non metal Oh, man. And... That's where that's coming off. Non-metallic metals. So in mini painting, there's obviously a lot of paints that are metallic. And typically they have um, some glitter in them to, uh, to add that little bit of a shine. Um, these colors can look fantastic, um, but they can also create a little bit of a problem in that you know, you use that and then suddenly all of your, uh, 
your water that you've been using to clean your brush has been contaminated with glitter. Um, and if you put down a wash, suddenly uh, you uh, it, it suddenly everything you're washing has a little bit of glittery to it. Glittery, yeah, I'll use that. So they can look great, but they come at a price. Uh, you got to be very careful when using them. Um, so the technique of non-metallic metals is taking a color, for example, this German gray, and using it as metal, and then through painting it in highlights, um, you can make it look as though it is shining just like any other metal. So when we get to that, oh boy, there I was holding my breath again. When we get to the highlighting section on this, um, we are going to be doing a lot of work on these metals. Luckily, we're going to be doing a lot of work where light is hitting these metals. And all of those parts that I was griping about earlier were hard to get to because they are covered, which means light isn't going to hit them, which means I won't have to highlight them. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that uh, hitting the cap of the wheel there. Starting to look like a thing. I mean, it's always looked like a thing, but. Um, cobalt and indigo were the difficult blues. Common blue was created in Europe using cornflowers. Michael, you are a font of knowledge. This is so cool. Um, so we could, um, potentially do, um, some, some blues on the roof. That is an option. Um, another option, I didn't bring it up, um, I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm not going to preface this. Another option would be to do it in, well, no, cause that's not wood. That is, that is riveted. So never mind. I was going to say we could do a, a, a wood tone, but I didn't like that idea to begin with. And turns out it also just doesn't make sense. So Forget I said anything. Man. Clearly, the amount of details on this thing are massive. Um, looking at the amount of time that I have painted this, um, we're running out of cobalt. Uh, not cobalt, we're running out of German gray. Uh, the amount of time that I have been using to paint this... Um, I painted up, if any of you saw the Plague Doctor video um, today, I uh, I was trying out a new format with that, which allowed for me to paint the entire thing, or record the entire thing in one sitting. Uh, normally in my old setup, um, I could only record for eight to 10 minutes at a time, uh, but this new setup let me just hit record and go. So I was able to see that it took me about an hour and 20, no, an hour and 30-ish minutes uh, to paint that guy. And that was um, and that was coming to it without much of a, a plan as well. I kind of I knew I wanted to do a plague doctor, and I I had just printed the mini sat down at the table and went, okay, let's see what happens. I hit record and away we went. Um, so before editing down um, kind of the boring bits where I was just sitting there waiting for paint to dry um, or looking up reference material, um, yeah, before, before editing those out, it took me about an hour and 30 minutes to from start to finish on that. And this is going to be like the, at least the two hour mark after today. Okay. The, um, the axles are pretty much done. Um, 
we've got a little more time left. Let's get these uh, lanterns all set up. So that's going to be the lanterns themselves along. Ooh, actually, I need to check up a detail on this. Uh, so it's going to be the lanterns themselves, the uh, at least the frame for them. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, and the poles attaching them to the cart. So we're going to go ahead, get this whole top bit here. Now, could I do this in a different metal color? Yes. Should I? No. Um, at least I don't think I should. And the reason for that um, comes from two different uh, schools of thought. The first being, and I'm sure we've all heard, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, Jay, the gentleman who gave me my first like real good classes on mini painting would always teach that you should really be able to do a mini only using four to five colors. Um, you, you can get a really good mini in that. Now that's not a hard and fast rule of only paint minis using four to five colors. Uh, no, that is um, kind of the, the beginner rule of you should be able to. And once you can, then start branching out. Oh my gosh, that is also going to be tough to get to. Then start branching out with more colors um, and getting more, more and more detailed. Um, whoop. There we go. Oh gosh, nope. Don't split my brush. Don't split the brush. Um, And the thing that I kind of took away from that as well was that minis that were painted with fewer colors, to me, looked cleaner. Uh, they didn't look as busy, so they I found them to be more interesting. Um, all right, now with these bits here, we're going to use that same technique of just using the edge of our brush. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I want this to look not as busy. Um, the other reason actually does go into a um, story or history of this cart. Um, as it was being built, you know, the, the blacksmith making the pieces um, was probably one blacksmith. Um, or, you know, a couple, but, um, unless this was a very fancy cart, I'm guessing that, um, the blacksmiths working on this really only had the one main material that was their go-to. So all of the metal on this would have been of a very similar metal. Um, at least all of the big components um so like the axles the brackets and yeah why not the why not the lanterns now i am definitely going to need to come back um and do a little more cleanup on the lanterns after we put our light source in there Ah, oh, this these are going to be an excuse for me to learn and do um, object source lighting, which both terrifies and excites me. Ooh, there is something in the lantern that needed cleaning up. That is going to be very difficult to do. So you know what, Michael? I think we are going to get a little bit of um, some rust or something happening on. Uh, these lanterns there is a little bit of damage done to them so that'll be cool all right moving on to the other
Ooh. All right, a little bit of cleanup on the brown there, but it's not going to be a huge amount. Um, you and that song is back in my head what uh what playlists have you all been listening to during this time what uh um what music have you been using to keep your quarantine entertaining and active You know, I listen to a lot of um, video game soundtracks, soundtracks in particular. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Sunless Sea right now, uh, which has a lovely sort of sea shanty feel to it. Um, And that is a game that also I enjoy, but I really need to... I've got this 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 hang-up on losing a game. Like, we're all of the... Well, we're all... I am of that era where I would, um, you know, save right before making a very difficult decision. And if I don't like, didn't like the outcome, then I would reload. And I'd, I'd try for the perfect playthrough every time. Um... And Sunless Sea is a game that losing is part of it. Like, you are going to die. Um, but in dying, you learn more about the world. It, it's been explained to me. I'm going to be perfectly honest and say um, it hasn't happened to me. I haven't gotten that far. Because I, I get far enough that I'm about to die, and I get upset and angry, and I go, no, I'm, and I stop playing for a little while. Uh, <laughs> I just need to get over that. Um, and that is something that I am actively trying to do. Um, I sit down with the game, and I go, okay, I am going to, I know what's going to happen, and I'm going to let it happen. Okay. There are the uh, the lanterns. Last but not least, it's time for this chimney. Um, this piece coming out here, I think we're going to do that in the same color. I guess I saved the easiest for last because, my goodness, there's nothing hidden. I can just slap this paint down. Uh, ben, been listening to, oh, the new Nine Inch Nails album. I, how is that? I actually have not listened to any of it yet. Um, I am a horrible, horrible fan. And we're going to get a little careful when we get down to the roof area because, um, again, dark colors are hard to cover up with lighter colors. Um, which, you know, if you're ever putting on theatrical makeup of any sorts, you always wait to put, like, the dark colors on last because you don't want it mixing with any of your lighter colors. It is a nightmare to fix. Um, luckily, here with the painting, it's a little more forgiving, but it's a little more forgiving. Whew. That is looking lovely. All right. 
I think uh, you can see under here where I have definitely already painted, some of that paint is uh, chipping away, and that is because of my thumbs. Um, rather than go through and fix that right now, I'm going to let that be and um, fix that all up uh, once we finish up on the base layers. Um, I'm going to have to come up with a new solution for holding this uh, because this is going to be... Um, I mean, it's going to be aggravating if I have to keep fixing that same spot again and again. Um, oh, they're both free. Now. Oh, no kidding. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go uh, go check that out. Okay, so oh no, spot that I missed. Spot that I missed. Hold on. Boop 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 boop. Yeah, cool. <laughs> there we have it. We have the uh, the metallics on this cart. Wow, that is really. Um, starting to come together. I, I particularly like what the uh, the lanterns have done. Um, so oh, 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 this is looking great. Next time uh, we are going to, it, it, I'm going to give you guys a week to think about um, what you want for the roof, uh, what color you want. Um, I'll probably put a poll or something up on the Instagram um, page for the Adventures Pack. Uh, if you ha haven't already done so, head over to the, that page. Give us a follow. Uh, we also have a Facebook page um, at the Adventures Pack. Um, God, yeah, I'll just plug all of the stuff. We, we have a Patreon too. No, I <laughs> no, this isn't about promoting us and what we're doing. This is about hanging out and having a good time. So uh, I'm going to give you guys a week to figure out what we want color-wise. Um, Next week, we're going to do this again. Uh, I'm going to stick with the um, the 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. paint time. Seems to be going well. Um, so next week, we'll be here 1 o'clock. Come in a little early uh, and make sure you've got your choices laid out for what you would like. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get to the roof. That shouldn't take too long. So then hopefully we'll also get to the windows and the curtain maybe ah oh, we're going to start getting to the details we're we're getting close to my favorite step of washing so very much looking forward to that let me pop back over here so i can do there we go these things um yeah so god this is looking great i'm really happy um and really excited um like i said We'll do this again next week. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all. I have been uh, enjoying doing this immensely. Uh, I hope that you've been enjoying it as well. Um, if uh, if you are liking this, you know, give the uh, the video a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, I, I'll do all this stuff. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when we do new videos and all that jazz. But most importantly, right now, um, thank you all so much for joining. Stay safe, stay sane. Uh, I'm Scott, and I will see you all at the next Miniature Monday. Bye-bye.